Today we are focusing in on the architect of civilization, the burnished foundation, copper. Yes, this element is so cool and our world would look so much different if we didn't have a ready supply of copper. This is Destructive Creativity and I am Jonathan Allers. Today's episode can be broken down into four main sections. Copper in the middle, copper in medicine, copper in architecture, and copper in electronics. And if you want to go check those out specifically, if you're just interested in one more than the other, you can go check them out. They're on the timeline and you can jump to those bookmarks unless YouTube has cancelled that feature. So let's talk about copper the metal. Copper the metal is a metal that is colored like this. It's a shiny kind of burnished brownish bronze, you know, it, it's copper color. Copper is a metal that can be found on the periodic table of elements. It's a metal, its symbol is Cu, its atomic weight is 63.55, and it's number 29, I think. Yeah, 29 on the periodic table of elements. Its melting temperature is just over 1000 degrees Celsius, which is just under 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, and it is incredibly useful. It's very easy to make alloys with, so if you mix it with a little bit of zinc or tin, you get either brass or bronze, both of which are essential for human civilizations. Copper is one of the only metals that we can find in relative purely just kind of sitting out in the open. That's why copper is used to be one of the first metals used by any civilization. So you can go and extract some copper ore and guess what? It's just copper. There's nothing else mixed with it. So you can melt it and forge it into pretty much anything you want. That's the easiest metal to work with. And then it gets stronger if you mix it with tin or with uh, zinc, but that comes later on in civilization. Fun fact about copper, it is one of the only metals on the periodic table of elements that has a color that isn't silver or gray naturally. The other one being, of course, gold. Now, if you were to mix gold with a little bit of copper, you get rose gold. So if you have some rose gold, that's because you have gold mixed with a little bit of copper. So how do we get copper? Well, we mine it out of the ground. We just dig it up and extract the copper from the ore that we dig up. Currently, Chile is the country that has the most copper deposits that we know of, but we are in no danger of running out of copper. So let's put this into perspective. We estimate that there's approximately 8.1 trillion pounds of copper available on the earth. In all of human civilization, we've only mined about 1.1 trillion pounds. So we have no danger of running out of copper because, get this, Copper is 100% recyclable. So if we ever find a massive need for quantities of copper, we'll just reuse the stuff that we have, which is excellent. Copper is currently the third most industrially used metal right behind uh, iron and aluminum. So what about copper in medicine? Number one question on this channel, can I eat it? And in this case, yeah, kinda. You actually do need copper inside of your body to survive. It, it aids in the use and utilization of iron. It helps make red blood cells. It's just very essential for your continued health. And you can get copper by eating leafy greens or potatoes or beans or all sorts of things that are high in copper. So don't eat a hunk of copper because that's bad. If you eat too much copper, you could get jaundice or diarrhea. And oddly enough, if you have copper-induced diarrhea, it can be bright blue. Hmm. Anyways, copper is also antimicrobacterial, and here's the cool part, we don't know why. So we know that it disrupts the outer layer of the cell, so if, uh, say, a bacteria was to come in contact with copper, it pretty much dies because its outer layer membrane is broken and then it starts leaking and it just can't survive outside of its protective layer. We don't know exactly why, we're still doing research on that, but the fact remains that it does, and we've known this for a long time. In fact, you might notice, if you're going inside of a hospital or other medical facility, that the door handles are made out of brass, which is an alloy of copper and zinc. So th this has been known for a very long time, and in fact, there have been studies that have been done that show that the more surfaces that are coated in copper in, say, a hospital room, the less likely there is to be an outbreak of severe bacterial infection. 
It's very cool, and I'll see if I can link that down below in the description. Copper is also toxic to invertebrates, which means that many ships have either copper or an alloy of copper on their hulls to prevent the infestation of barnacles and different invertebrates like that. Let's talk about copper in engineering and architecture. Now, there are some very famous uses of copper in architecture. Most famously probably is going to be the Statue of Liberty. But that beautiful green color you see all over Europe and in the States, it's just amazing. And it's very, very long lived. So you are probably surrounded by copper right now in your house, probably in ways that you don't even know. So your roof is probably covered with shingles, asphalt shingles. But did you know that they actually mix in copper with the asphalt to prevent the growth of algae? Otherwise, algae could just grow anywhere, but it doesn't like copper. Very cool. So why is the Statue of Liberty green and not brown like copper colored brown? Well, over time, it actually oxidizes. A very, very, very thin layer on top of the copper turns green, and that acts as a protective layer for the rest of the copper underneath. That makes copper one of the longest lived cladding options available. They estimate that the lifespan of copper cladding is over 100 years, whereas things like asphalt shingles are only like 30 years. And we've been using copper to build things for a very long time. In fact, we found copper pipes to carry water in Egyptian pyramids over 4,000 years old. That's seriously impressive. What about copper in electronics? This is where copper really shines. Because if we didn't have copper, we wouldn't have computers as we know them. We wouldn't have motors, we wouldn't have radios or antennas or anything like that because copper is very conductive for electricity and heat. Copper is only second to silver in terms of thermal and electrical conductivity and it is so much easier to get. So in your house right now, you have electrical wires providing you power for your lights, for your computer, for your camera, everything around you is provided for by copper. In fact, energy is created by using copper wires in spools. Copper is used to take away the heat in your computers using thermal pipes, which we did an episode on. Or even in the microchip on your computer or electronics, everything is made of copper. It's so cool! This has just been an overview of what copper is as an element and how it affects your life. So let me know down in the comments of what you see around you that uses copper or is made of copper. There's a lot, believe me. This is Destructive Creativity. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Bye!